have to go over there. There's, there's nothing for me to do for you guys. I mean, it is you. No. No, I, I can't review a mobile game. I can't, I, that's rock bottom. I can't review that game. Bendy, Bendy, please, let me, let me go over there, man. Oh, that's right. I'm batshit insane. Plushies can't talk. All right. Here goes nothing. It's not that bad. <laughs> oh, God! The Twisted Metal franchise is, as you would say, quite twisted. I would put this game under the genre of murder car battles. Is that a genre? Anyways, the actual genre is vehicular combat, which I never knew was a genre, but mainly that's because we don't see much of these games anymore these days. It's sad to see and wish we could get more in the current day, especially Twisted Metal, if I might add. Each game is pretty simple. Defeat your enemies on a given map, progress through the tournament, beat the final boss, where there be a demon from hell, a giant ice cream truck that seeks vengeance, a smaller ice cream truck with a fucking murder attack. This game kind of has a dark side to it. <laughs> dark side. With getting wishes from beating the tournament, but those wishes sometimes don't work out in your favor as the man running the contest, Calypso, he can make you regret your wish in the long run. Take this one for instance. We won the game, right? So you gotta give us our prize. Um, well, we want. No, no, dude. Say demand. Okay, okay, okay. We demand that you give us the ability to fly. Certainly. That is so cool. Congratulations. I have granted your wish. Have a great time in the friendly skies. Let's go. Wahoo! Hey man, this can't be right. Good thing these first class tickets are refundable. That's how twisted yet comical he is. Twisted Metal Black went into a really, really dark phase. He captured me. The only thing I could think was, what a waste. All those people I hadn't killed yet. However, it kind of built the franchise to where it is known today. So, what about this game? Come on, Gober, jump! The game starts off with a cutscene. Some kid is playing with his frog in a schoolyard, and some punk-looking kid just punches him. Yeah, that's just how it works. He steals his frog and forces him to play his game if he wanted his frog back. Two more kids fall victim to the bully's rap, who goes by Calypso in this game. One is thrown into a trash can, and one who's in a wheelchair is kicked down a hill road. Why was the wheelchair kid in the middle of the road? He, he pretty much had a bully me sign on the back of his wheelchair. I digress. We don't see the wheelchair kid again after the opening cutscene. <laughs> So, how does this game get the title lighthearted spin-off of a twisted series? A name that I just came up with five minutes ago. Twisted Metal Small Brawl. A take of Twisted Metal, but it's just a bunch of kids taking on Younger Calypso's tournament. Same kind of tournament, but instead of killing each other, we're just destroying RC cars. Get to the end, get your cutscene for the game, depending on your character. So, 
Who are the characters? We have Crimson Fury, Hammerhead, Mr. Grimm, Slam, Outlaw, Shadow, Spectre, Sweet Tooth, Thumper, Twister, and Warthog. Each character is given a character biography, so you can get to know who you are playing as. They also have their own unique special attacks, which will be displayed here now. Now there are some unlockables that you can get in the game. How does one get them? Well, a uh, good old TZ is here to show ya. Alright, so shoot the middle of the swing set in the first level of the tournament and grab the PNG of Axel. He'll be unlocked there. Shoot the plumber's ass crack. I, I, I'm not kidding. Shoot the plumber's ass crack and he will fart fucking fire. Destroying the island in the middle, and in there you will find Darkseid. Grab the terrible looking PNG and you will unlock him that way. Here you need to unlock this level through Endurance Mode. More on that later. Enter in Endurance Mode and shoot the stockings on this level. A PNG will fly out of Mime. Pick her up and you'll unlock her car. Mime is just a mimic car, and she will use the attacks of the opponents on the battlefield. So Mime is pretty much a toss-up if you'll get good attacks or absolute dog shit attacks. There are two more to get, but I suppose I need to get into the game to show you who they are in the game. We will be making today's video off of the original PlayStation 1. We will not be using the emulator today, so this is as genuine as it can get. Let's get a game started as Twister and get into the tournament. Tournament mode is the focus of every Twister Metal game, complete through eight levels of enemies with your selected character. Sometimes you'll face three, sometimes you'll face four, but most importantly, you'll be facing five. You will enter the first level, Playground Peril. The battlefield is the school playground. A total of three enemies to take out on this level, and you gotta wrap this up before recess is over, or else the principal is gonna be pissed. Kids, get back in here. What did I say about RC cars on the playground? Great, Billy's crying now. The background here has some unique features about it. If you jump and shoot the kid in the merry-go-round over there, you can just launch him. Like, fucking launch him. The interactive material in these games are incredible, and it isn't the only game that incorporates this. You can launch toy soldiers at your enemies and watch them deal some good damage on your opponent. The swing sweats can give you some drops here and there. Shooting a duck will give you health if you need it, and with a limit on how much you could fire at it before it becomes a roasted duck. The playground equipment is also part of the battle, but nothing unique up here to point out. The music on this track is actually a remix of Twisted Metal 2's Los Angeles theme, which will be compared here. A personal favorite theme for many, including myself. It was a nice homage to one of the best Twisted Metals, if not the best. Twist the metal out there. Defeat the enemies and we can start off to the next battle. Cardinal Mall is the next location for battle. There isn't really that much interaction on this board. If anything, there's just traps on this map. Mainly in the center of the board, the swinging axe that'll deal some damage, a bus not coming from the ground, and they'll do the same thing. There's also one interactive thing on this board. Push this wall here and you'll go into a secret patches for a health drop. There's a skull patrolling around in a circle. Getting hit by this thing will cause loads of damage. However, shooting it will drop a health pickup, like the duck does on Playground P Peril. Just like the duck, you can only shoot it three times before it's done giving you goodies. It gives off a funhouse vibe with the music as well as the floor kind of giving off the funhouse vibe with the spinning tube and the circular spinning floor. A murdered funhouse is bored two out of eight in the tournament mode. 
and we move on to the third board as we finish the enemies in this map. Easy Death Oven. This battle takes place in a kitchen. Somebody's kitchen. A kitchen with an active plumber. Okay. Um, let's try. Okay, uh, okay, working. I can do that. Well, this is like my previous job. Some fucking lady decided, you know what, I'm gonna let my kids do RC murder car battles or whatever the fuck they're doing. Alright. God damn it! This level is full of interactive things. The can opener will deal damage to your enemies. There is also a microwave you can bait your enemy to come in towards it and fire the machine gun at it, trapping them and cooking them for a little bit, causing a little bit of damage. You can use the stoves to burn enemies or, or yourself, but you can stop the fire by doing a quick boost. You can also hit the mouse traps in the center and fly towards the island in the middle. The board also features the first of environmental attacks, using the fridge's ice machine to shoot ice and freeze whatever is in sight of the blast. The, the final interactive thing is the plumber, actually. Believe it or not, firing at the ass of this plumber will cause him to react and destroy the island in the middle and reward you a power missile pickup, health, and like I mentioned earlier, dark side is found here for some reason. As you finish off the five enemies, you move on to the next level and go somewhere very unique. Mini Golf Mayhem. We made it to the halfway point of this tournament and are presented with a mini golf course as our next battleground. The board has an interesting optional activity. Mini Golf. Yes, you can play mini golf on this board and receives drops from scoring. It's a complete waste of time, and you'd be way better off grabbing off from off the ground and waiting for it to respawn to pick it up again. The environmental attack involves the volcano in the middle, shooting out fireballs and causing them to explode and set fire around the volcano. There are more traps around this map. For example, an area that will crush you if you are not fast enough. An area that will spike you if you're not fast enough. There's a pipe that'll launch you to a higher ground. After defeating four enemies, rather than going to the next battleground, green flames will spawn and you will be in a different location, summoning the first boss. You will have to face Trapper. He will trap you within a small confined space, which is just the volcano area, the spike trap area, and the pyramid hole. That's all you get for room. His special is fairly strong and his health is a lot higher than normal battle cars. Just keep freezing and attack. Run away if need be, stay alive. I forgot to mention this earlier, you are granted three chances per battlefield. So having all three before Trapper will help you in the long run. Defeat Trapper and you'll be able to progress to the next battleground. Meet your maker. This board takes place inside a meat locker. I'm honestly not sure how or why this even exists in this game since all the other locations are something kids can interact with. All right, we need a, we need a map. We need a level five. So we, uh, we already got the golf course. That was level four. Playground, level one. Pretty good, that was a good one, guys. Genius on that one. Uh, we also have fun house. That was actually really brilliant on you. Brilliant on you, Greg. Uh, but we need a level 5. Uh, do we have anything for level 5? Meat Locker. It's a lot meat lockers. Yeah, that's pretty good. Fuck it, Meat Locker. We're going for it. This board isn't very interactive. If there's one thing this board does have, though, is there's this one trap that proves to be very effective in combat. The environmental weapon is very effective on this board by using it over here. All you need to do is wait here and activate when your enemies are on the conveyor belt. Literally one of the easiest boards to play on. Uneventful, but evil. Gridiron Gore. It's a football field. There's a man on a lawnmower. He's the environmental attack. It's pretty self-explanatory. Health items are in both the helmets, the most open field, that's it to it. I also discovered that this song is a remix of one of my favorite songs from Twisted Metal 2. An example we put here.
not sure what else I need to say. <laughs> Treetop Rumble. This is one of the more scary boards, since you can just easily kill yourself on this map. You could fall off this side over here, but if you fall off on the other side of the trampoline, you'll lose a life automatically. You can sometimes overshoot yourself towards the bridge, and next thing you know, you're off the bridge. This board is forgiving by putting a trampoline in the center, but outside your nightmare. There is a questionable lawnmower up in the treehouse, did that get there? Shooting the on switch will cause it to go around the entire board, mowing down anyone or anything in its path. There is another trap over here, but it's not as effective as meet your makers. If anything, it's a trap for you. The environmental attack launches fireworks from a box and attacks at the bridge, kind of like the ice cube attack. It aims for anything on its path. As unforgiving as this board is, Twister held quite the advantage on here with their special, so this made the job quite easy, thankfully. After we finish off the enemies, we head into the final board and find out the challenge the last level leaves. Now slay. What on earth did this final board have to offer? Well, let's take a look. We have four enemies in the theater. But as we just defeat one, we get a notification that piecemeal is coming. Who is piecemeal? That is piecemeal. Super big and powerful. Health is over the roof, and depending on your car in the event, you may need to focus on power missiles over your special. Piecemeal will also be able to destroy the theater seats, making the battleground more open and not possible to really hide. Piecemeal will use everyone's special, even if they're not on the map. Kind of like mine except it targets every single special in the game. As we drop his health to the three-fourths remaining, he'll disappear and you'll go back to defeating the normal drivers again. The popcorn cart will roll down if it's struck with a weapon opening the stage. You can also bump into it and that will also cause it to fly down. You'll be able to collect turbo, health, and a power missile. After you rinse and repeat piecemeal three more times, you'll have completed the tournament mode. From here, you are rewarded with a cutscene showing what each character gets for winning the competition. But as you can see for Twister, it didn't quite work in her favor. I thought that you said that I could go fast. <laughs> well, you'll go plenty fast, babe. Yikes! Might wanna tighten that seatbelt, Twister! <laughs> Every character has a unique cutscene, except the unlockable characters. If you wanna if you want the full compilation, it's a six minute video. You can watch all the cutscenes. But yeah, here's just the personal favorites. Oh man, you could have anything you wanted. And all you can think of is a little ice cream. <laughs> Let me go! Stop the car! Who the fuck up so many? Oh man, you sniking us, man. Yeah, man, we don't want no system for no talk, huh? Yo, we want fat sound. Yeah, man, that's fat sound, about. baby. Just keep your shirts on. <laughs> fat enough? Four, three, two, one. Yeah. Huh? What? Yo, ain't no sound coming out your mouth. You, you know stupid talking right here. Oh man, I read your lips. Shut up. You, you come over here making shut up. Remember when I mentioned, hey, there's two more characters that unlock in this game. Wanna guess who they are? If you guessed Trapper and Beastmeal, well, congratulations, sir or ma'am, you are very much correct. To unlock Trapper, you need to complete tournament mode with everyone on medium or hard difficulty. Yeah, I did all that. And to get Piecemeal, it's rather easier than Trapper's. Complete tournament mode as tr only Trapper on hard mode. I say easier because you only have to win on hard mode with one guy, and if you're not the best, you'll find yourself struggling as like myself. Once you get these guys, you pretty much completed the game. Or have you?
Welcome to Endurance Mode. Live as long as you can in this game mode and you will win new boards you can play on. Not in Tournament Mode, but rather in Challenge or Endurance. Endurance is fun, especially if you want to try and break your own personal record or your board and Tournament Mode just doesn't seem to satisfy, especially when you've gotten every single cutscene. If you defeat 10 enemies, you will unlock the board, Shock Therapy. Defeating up to 20 enemies will unlock Buster's Lanes. This board is a bowling alley, which just screams, I can be fun! Defeating 30 enemies will unlock Holiday Havoc. Challenge mode supplies a normal battle, just like tournament mode, but it's just one battle. And you can choose any of the boards that you already have unlocked. You can challenge yourself in this game mode by going into hard mode and choosing the enemies you want to face. Challenge mode doesn't have that much to offer. Once again, it's just for a quick pickup game. In conclusion, Twist Metal Small Brawl has a lot to offer, but if anything, it can be considered one of the worst entries in the Twist Metal franchise, and understandably so. We went from fucking M Twisted Metal to this. Twist Metal in a kid's world just doesn't feel right according to the critics, but I still come to appreciate this game to death. For me, and this is my opinion, so please, let me be allowed to say this to N Black. I don't prefer Small Brawl over Black N2, but I really like this game. The idea of just unlocking characters and having them saved, rather than having to input a cheat code to unlock Sweet Tooth and Minion, only to lose them when you reboot the game again. It, this game was perfect for me 19 years ago when this game was released, and it was easy to play over Twist Metal 1 or Twist Metal 4 with the, that damn Sweet Tooth attack. I would recommend this game because, fucking yes, this game is wonderful. If you can get your hands on this game in a PlayStation 1, go for it at all costs. There's nothing to lose. Twist Metal Small Brawl, even though it is quite a strange spin-off game compared to the other entries of the Twist Metal franchise, it's quite the game I rather enjoyed. Now, I'm looking for my next review. Well, basically...